Okay, good morning and welcome to Yeshiva Yutubi Yom Tzion. Today we're doing Masechus Erev and Perek Vav, Mishnah is Dalet. And hey, Mishnah Dalet I want to discuss today. <clears throat> it says, Me Masai Nosim Rishos Be'i Shamay Omrim Bo'od Yom Yisil Omrim Meshach HaSheicha. We mentioned that one of the halachas of Erev Chatseros is that if you have, you have to join together. Usually with bread, Erev Chatseros, join together the same bread, you all own it. And designate it for your Erev. You have to say, Harei Zele Erev. Now, um, what about if you left one person out, a Yisrael out, who's Asras on you? So there is a way out on Shabbos. You can Mavato Rishos. You can say, I'm not the Baal Abayas in my house. It's ownerless. And basically, you own my house. So but you have to do that before sunset on Friday afternoon. Because it, because if you do it on Shabbos, you're not allowed to do that because you, it's Machna Rishos. Right? I'm transferring my house ownership to the rest of the people in the Chatzar who share a backyard with me or share a front yard with me. So I can't do that. On Shabbos, because Kinyanim are not are generally they're abundant Asher Kinyanim on Shabbos. You might come to write on Shabbos. Now, <clears throat> Beis Hillel says, and we hold like Beis Hillel, you can even do it on Friday night or on Shabbos day in the middle of the day and have an Erev Chatseros, not have a problem with Erev Chatseros, because it's called Sila, it's not a Kinyan. A person is just withdrawing himself, his ownership over the house. So you can even do it on Shabbos. Now, how do we understand this, right? What does that mean? So, and the second problem of Beis Hill is you can even do it on Friday night. All the halachas of Shabbos by Muksa, by Erev Tumen, are all determined at Bein Hashmashos, right? Bein Hashmashos, Friday evening at sunset, right? It depends where your, your Erev Tumen is or your Shvisa is, whether something is Muksa or Bein Hashmashos or not. So why over here, even in the middle of Shabbos, you can be Masali, Matal Yerushas? The answer is because the idea of Siluk is not, it's not like Hefker. Hefker is like, I'm saying I'm mafia or something. It's sort of like a declaration. I'm a mafia or something. See, look, is even more than half care. See, look, according to Basil, basically, I'm relinquishing rights. And it's, it's, Megala Milsa Lamafreya. It's retroactive. Basically, it's saying, right, I never had, I'm a Vata my Roshos. I, now I'm telling you, now I'm Megala my Das. I'm, I'm, I'm revealing to you that I didn't, I don't own my house on Shabbos. But part of revealing to you is that I'm saying that even at the beginning of Shabbos, obviously that's the the, the trigger of the halachas is Benash Marshals on sunset on Friday afternoon. So he's Magal through sea look. I'm removing myself Lamafre retroactively because he's just been Magal. He's explaining to us now through his words that happen retroactively because it's not a Kenyan. It's not like Hefker or a Kenyan. You're not like Duke on Shabbos. He's just revealing to you that I never meant to own my house during Shabbos. Because it's not like Hefker, right? He's a lot of, right? Technically, you can't go and steal his house on Shabbos. You go and take the deed of the house on Shabbos. You can't do that. It belongs to him. Vata Roshos does not mean you're relinquishing ownership over your house. It means that I'm not, I'm revealing that already at Menash I want, I want other people to have use, right? It's giving Roshos. And here Roshos, I'm giving you permission to use my house on Shabbos, right? And the thing is, Roshos is much different than Hefker. Hefker means I'm relinquishing ownership. I'm making anyone able to take this. You can't take this guy's house. He's Mavatal Roshos. It just means he's giving you permission. And if I give permission on 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 in the middle of Shabbos, right? Obviously, he had in mind to give permission in the beginning of Shabbos because that's when the din takes effect. Now the Mishnah continues and brings them all closer. And May and Rabbi Huda, what about if the person Mavatal Roshos on Shabbos decides, you know, he wants to recapture his house and to use his house to take things from his house to the street or to the yard on Shabbos? Could he? What happens if he does this? According to a mayor, if he, even if he does a show gig by accident, he revealed to us that he's not relinquishing Rosh Hashanah. According to Rabbi Huda, we possibly him like, only if he did a it, but show gig wouldn't be a problem. Why is that? So in tandem with the Pesach like Beis Hillel, that it's Siluk, right? He's just revealing to us that he's giving permission at the beginning of Shabbos. So if he did a show gig unwittingly, he made a mistake. So it's all about his revelation. He's telling us what, 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 he, what he thought to do. If he doesn't go unwittingly on Shabbos, so obviously, if he would have known about it, he wouldn't have done it. So you can't say that he wasn't Masalic himself at the beginning of Shabbos. They did have amazed it. So now he's saying, okay, you, I told you before that I was about to have but now we find out Lamafra retroactively. He's probably not. If he did have amazed it, obviously he really didn't believe Shalim with a full heart, relinquish his Rosh at the beginning of Shabbos, or give permission to use his house to anyone who wants to use his house. But if he did it with Shogig, it doesn't show anything because he told you, he told you, bad, yeah, I'm a vata marushos, with clarity. The fact that he made a mistake and he took something out, that doesn't negate, doesn't negate what he gave permission. He gave permission on purpose, right? Clearly, 
he's a bar das, not a shota over here. He gave permission. So the fact that he did it b'shogeg by mistake doesn't reveal anything about his das previously. Um, it just was a mistake. It's like a toast, like a nether b'toast or kdushay toast. And therefore, it doesn't ruin the nesinas rishon, which, have, which works retroactively. And that's why we pass like Rabbi Huda, like Beis Hillel over here, that it depends on Silo, right? Because if it was a Kenyan, let's say by Beis Shammai, that it's a Kenyan, that Mavato Rosh says, I'm giving over uh, my Rosh to you, and you have to do it before Shabbos, I can't make a Kenyan on Shabbos. So he does it with right? He does it with Shogi, unwittingly, he carries something out. So it weakens the Kenyan. It weakens the Kenyan because the Kenyan was done, um, the Kenyan was done, right? It's a Misa, a Kenyan, that he, he gave it over to you, but if he doesn't have a Shogig, so it's not about his Das. It's not about did he do it on purpose, did he not do it on purpose. It's about the actuality, the practicality in Halacha. It weakens a Kenyan because he carried from, the, practically, he carried from his house outside on Shabbos, so it weakens the Kenyan. Maybe it would, would uh, unravel the Kenyan. Um, but according to, to Basila, it's just his Das, what he's telling us, the truth about what he's telling us, Shogi doesn't ruin it, only Mazer ruins it. That's the conclusion of today's share. Hope you enjoyed. See you on the next one.